Opotiki is a small town in New Zealand on the coast of the Bay of Plenty. And it was in this town that a man named Dixon Cornelius Savage was born in 1884. Around 20 years later, after he quote-unquote got a young woman into trouble, he broke off all communication with his family and changed his name to Richard Charles Travis. When the First World War broke out, Travis enlisted with the New Zealand Expeditionary Force, and after a short stint in Gallipoli at the end of the campaign there, he arrived in France in April 1916. Not long after his arrival, he earned the nickname the King of No Man's Land due to his skill in nocturnal scouting activities in the area between the opposing trenches. He solidified his reputation on the 24th of July 1918 when he engaged in activities that would lead to him being awarded the Victoria Cross. The citation was published in the London Gazette on the 27th of September 1918 and read as follows. For most conspicuous bravery and devotion to duty. During surprise operations, it was necessary to destroy an impassable wire block. Sergeant Travis, regardless of all personal danger, volunteered for this duty. Before zero hour, in broad daylight and in close proximity to enemy posts, he crawled out and successfully destroyed the block with bombs, thus enabling the attacking parties to pass through. A few minutes later, a bombing party on the right of the attack was held up by two enemy machine guns, and the success of the whole operation was in danger. Perceiving this, Sergeant Travis, with great gallantry and utter disregard of danger, rushed the position, killed the crew, and captured the guns. An enemy officer and three men immediately rushed at him from a bend in the trench and attempted to retake the guns. These four he killed single-handedly, thus allowing the bombing party on which much depended to advance. The success of the operation was almost entirely due to the heroic work of this gallant NCO, and to the vigour with which he made and used opportunities for inflicting casualties on the enemy. He was killed 24 hours later when, under a most intense bombardment prior to an enemy counterattack, he was going from post to post, encouraging the men. The entire New Zealand division mourned the loss of the King of No Man's Land and he was buried in the new British cemetery in Cohen, France, where his headstone still stands. His Victoria Cross is held at the Southland Museum in Invercargill, New Zealand. (laughs) 